At the screening appointment, it is important to ask the patient if they know why they are attending and if they understand the importance of the screening in relation to their diabetes management. Determination of an individual's level of risk of developing a diabetic foot ulceration is important. Explaining the different levels of risk and their indications will help the patient to understand the impact that their diabetes will have on them. Your patient will need to remove their footwear and hosiery to allow for a thorough examination of their feet and lower legs. Asking the patient whether they've had any problems with their feet or lower limbs recently and also checking to see if they can reach their own feet is an important indication as to whether they can look after them at home. When examining the feet, look for breaks in the skin, checking in between each toe, looking for fissures, hard skin, corns and any structural deformities to the foot. It is also important to remember to look around the back of the heel. The presence of hard skin or callus over weight-bearing areas of the foot is a high risk factor for developing ulceration, increasing the risk by up to 77%. The presence of blood-stained callus and neuropathy is considered to be highly predictive of ulceration. The pulses in the feet are checked to ensure that there is sufficient blood supply to the feet. When testing the vascular status of the patient, firstly look at the foot. Are there any hairs on the foot or lower leg? Is the skin pale, deep pink, red or purple? Is the skin cold to the touch? On the foot, there are two main pulses. The dorsalis pedis pulse is located on the top of the foot running towards the big toe. It is important to note that this pulse is absent in around 10% of the population and the location may vary slightly between individuals. The posterior tibial pulse is located just behind the medial malleolus at the level of the ankle joint. Place the first and second fingers together lightly on the patient's skin overlying the pulse site that you're examining, ensuring your thumb is kept away. You should feel a regular light beating. If you cannot feel a pulse, try the next site and then return to this one afterwards and try again. In most instances, it is sufficient to record pulses as being either present or absent for a foot screening. In order to determine the level of sensation present at the feet, a 10 gram monofilament will need to be used. Before conducting this test, it is often advised to show the patient what is going to happen by introducing the monofilament to their forearm so that they are able to see and feel what will occur. This will ensure that the patient is able to confirm if they can feel the filament. With the patient's eyes closed, the monofilament should be placed at a 90 degree angle to the skin and slowly pushed until it is bent by approximately one centimeter. The skin should not be jabbed with the monofilament. The monofilament should be held in position for one to two seconds and then slowly released over one to two seconds. The patient should be asked to verbally confirm if they're able to feel the filament when it is introduced to the test sites of the feet. This procedure should be repeated on all testing sites on both feet and recorded. It is important not to help, prompt or lead the patient's responses. If the patient is unable to feel any of the sites tested, then this may be an indication that they're suffering a loss of sensation. Further investigations that may occur in patients with diabetes include blood sugar monitoring and advice regarding general diabetes control. More detailed assessment of the nerve supply to the feet could include the use of a tuning fork, blunt sharp determination, as well as quantitative assessment with a neurothesiometer. Further vascular investigations would include the use of a Doppler and full ABPI testing. Temperature monitoring is useful when determining active diabetic events.